together will say, This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, eternal seed of the world of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same again. Never, never, never. I will never be the same again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, once he started, please turn with me to Psalm 90 and verse 12. Psalm 90 and verse 12. Psalm 90, verse 12. If you are there, shout hallelujah. So let us read together. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Many of us be like we will never die. But show me those that live before us where they are today. That's why I believe the Almighty God wants to speak to us, to handle that life that you have. Handle it with care. Let's take the song, Babaye, Jeti Jobarede, Father, let your kingdom come.
But no matter how long, it will expire. That is why the one that is wise will take advantage of that life before it expires. And because life has a beginning, it must have an end. Because life has a beginning, it must have an end. Since the creation of the world, there has been no exception. And in the Lord tarries, there will be no exception. Everyone that is born will answer the call of death. That is why at times like this you will want to really open your ears and hear what the Lord has to tell you before the gift expires. The duration of the gift is unknown. That makes it even more complex. If somebody were to say to you, you have only 80 years to live, you are guided and you can do things in proper sequence. But the gift that we have is a gift that has an expiry date. And the duration of that gift is uncertain. Why did God make it to be that way? So that you can live every day as if it might be your last. Because you have no clue when it will expire. Therefore, you must live that day as if it's your last. I'm sorry it's an unusual sermon, but it's the one God wants me to preach today. Because many of us approach life like there is tomorrow. You behave with certainty that there is tomorrow. But everything around you confirms to you that tomorrow is not certain. Everything you look around tells you, but we refuse to learn that tomorrow is not certain. I'll share with you in case you think you will live forever. Just in case you believe that you will be the first exception, the only one that will not die. Maybe somebody has told you before that God wants to do something new in your life that you will know will not die. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7. We can talk there so we can read together. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7. So then, shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who whether we like it or not, what it will be a return to the owner. The owner will collect what he did. The flesh will go back to where it came from. And the spirit will return to God who gave it. That's why the Bible says the first Thessalonians will read that one together again. Chapter 5, verse 2 to 4. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2 to 4. So that you don't allow the expiry date to meet you on the bed. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2 to 4. Then shall the dust for you for yourself know that part, no part of it that the day of the Lord 
coming as coming as the day of the Lord coming as a thief in the night without announcement without notice unexpected verse 3 says for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape but ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief I just stop that so you are not in darkness don't allow that day to overtake you as a team. That's why I want to pray for somebody this morning. You will fulfill destiny Amen. before you go back to the world. This morning, the prayer group, I have a small prayer group that prays with me from time to time. We met inside the covenant at 6 a.m. this morning and we prayed for two and a half hours inside the building. And one of the things that God said to me, and I told them, I said, that which you will do for God, do quickly. And it's not just for me, it's for every one of us. That which you will do for God, do quickly. And he added another dimension to it. Apart from this point of you never know when it comes to collect his gifts back. He said, as we move, the speed with which we do his work is the speed with which he will do his work in your life. So for many of you that would like to do something for God, and you say, I, can, I will do it tomorrow, I will do it next month. God says, that blessing that I also want to do for you, I will do it tomorrow, I will do it next month. How many of you want your blessing next month or next year or five years time? How many of you? So why then do you delay that which you want to do for God. So the same speed which we, you do my work is the same speed with which I will do my work in your life. The reason why many of us delay is that you think there's tomorrow. Oh, don't worry. I'll, I'll give my life to Christ next month. Be the worker. Don't worry, I, I have some things I'm trying to settle in my life now. I'll give my life to Christ next year. Okay. I pray that you'll be there next year. Point number two. Undo with care. Undo the life with care. You see that glass that is shaking on the screen? That is your life, that is my life. Handle it with great care. How do you handle your life with care? By following the manual of life. By following the manual. manual. Like everything else that we are familiar with. When you buy a car, does it come with a manual? The manual will say, after 5,000 kilometers, change the oil, change this, change the plug, and so on. And the manual will say, after 60,000 kilometers, do this and that, more elaborate uh, uh, servicing. If you don't follow that manual, that car will not last long. How many of you know what I'm talking about? If you decide on your own that you bought a very beautiful car, you will just be driving it without any service. Brand new, keep driving it. Within one year, 
it will not. On the road, that brand new car will not. Why? Because we did not follow the manual. When you go to the temple to buy any drug, they say to you, ages 0 to 2, take half tablet. Ages 12 to so so and so, adults, take two tablets twice a day. And you look at it and say, this, this thing is sweet. This medication, I like the taste of this medication. I will take 20 tablets 10 times a day. You will not see the next day. You will die. Because we did not follow the manual. So when you see that cup shaking, shaking, it's your life, it's my life. Are you following the manual? There is a manual to live life. That manual is called the Bible. Many of us think you can go through life on your own. Like the person that wants to take 10 tablets or 20 tablets 10 times a day, the life will crash. And if it doesn't crash, it will end up in hell fire because you did not follow the power. That's why I'm praying for somebody here today. That your life will never be the same as from this moment to Jesus. Life will never always be rosy. Never. If you see anybody that will tell you life will always be rosy from the beginning to the end, know that you are seeing it for one night. Life will never, no matter how much you try, life will never always be rosy. And God will deliberately make sure that life is not always rosy. So that you can learn. This morning as we were praying, with the prayer team, one of the things that God asked me to share with them was Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2 to 3. In that Deuteronomy 8, 2 to 3, God said, My people, I suffer them with hunger. I make them to lack. I make them to suffer in the wilderness for 40 years. I want them to test them to see what is in their heart. I want them to test their obedience unto me. The Israelites spent 40 years in the wilderness, not because they could not have gone faster, but because God wanted to suffer them. God wanted to submit them to pain and torture and suffering and see if they will stand. That is part of the manual. You have to go through the fire. You have to go through the pain, the struggle, the challenges. This will come that you will wonder, does God exist? If those days haven't come to you yet, hold on, it's coming. It's coming. You will wonder, does God exist? It's part of the matter. It's part of the matter. And that's part of what he asked me to share with the with the leaders of the church. Look beyond the pain. Look beyond the struggle. Look beyond the disappointment. Look beyond the prayers that have not been answered. It's part of the Bible. Our lives, like I said, will not always be rosy and beautiful. Our life is like that, shaking, shaking, and you only realize it when a few things happen. That's why when the plane crashed, that dinner plane crashed, many people all of a sudden realize, ah, 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 I could have 
you could have, he didn't know that you could have died before, you didn't know. He said, I, I, I knew that plane yesterday, they said, one of my friends said to me, he said, as soon as the plane crashed, he got a call from another friend, and the friend said, do, do you have, did you hear what happened? He said, yes. What do you think? He said, oh, you know, this is Nigeria, they're very careless. He said, no, that's what I'm talking about. Check the number of that plane. Go and check. And they went to Nigeria and said, it's 992. They said to him, do you know the number of the plane we flew yesterday from Abuja? He said, ah! 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 I would have died! Those kind of things to know that that's the life. That's why Psalm 19, verse 12 says, Teach us to number our days so that we can apply our hearts to wisdom. Some people will say, You know, I thank God that I'm a careful driver. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For you to die is not enough to be careful. What it requires is for somebody else to be careless. You are driving very carefully. You are going at one kilometer an hour. Everybody is overtaking you. You are saying, I shall not die in Jesus' name. I shall not die. I shall not die. I shall not die. die." Keep going. Somebody somewhere, another driver somewhere that had just finished smoking in their head will turn from his lane and just come to you. I shall not die, I shall not die, I shall not die. You shall? <laughs> Life is not in your hands. It's not in your control. There is nothing you can do that can guarantee you will see tomorrow. Nothing. Nothing. There is nothing you can do that will give you the assurance that you will see tomorrow. Nothing. If you like exercise for money tonight, I will go and go and check me away. I shall not die. I shall not die. I shall not die. I shall not die. You even I shall not die. You will sleep on that thing. And you. I remember the story of someone uh, that passed on a couple of years back. He was on this end road, he was coming this way very carefully. Somebody on the other side of the road, not even on the same side, somebody on the other side somehow, somehow, swapped, left his own side of the road and came straight for this person. And that was how he died. Was it careful? Yes. Very careful. The car was in good condition. There was no rain. And do with uh, two weeks ago or three weeks ago we had to bury a friend of of us that was attending another parish. Unfortunately I wasn't around when they did the burial. But I remember this brother when I was in Promised Land, fervent for the Lord, 40 something, 40 years ago. So, on Friday I had, a, I had lunch with a colleague of mine in the office, and we were just talking, uh, and I said to him, you're 54 today. You, want, you just don't know why we are at lunch and uh, today is the best that you are 54 and you didn't tell us. Let's celebrate. Said, no, you can't celebrate that he's still thinking about his son. He lost his son, 10 year old. How many years? 10 year old. How many of us are older than 10 years? So you are doing extra time. It is not by age. It is not by health. You just are not in control. 
and you will never be in control. You will never. No matter what you do, you will never be in control. That's why it says, you brethren, be not in darkness, so that it will not come to you like a thief in the night. I pray for someone here this morning. The wisdom that comes from this message will not be lost on you in Jesus' name. Yeah. You will do in a hurry yeah. that which you must do in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Because tomorrow may never come. Tomorrow may never come. Point number three. I'm skipping some things because I know the Holy Spirit may magnify the message in your life. Because of this realization, because you know that tomorrow is not guaranteed, because you know that the owner will come to collect his gift someday, you must handle this life with care. Why do I say that? The good things that you would like to do, don't leave it to tomorrow. Because you may not have the time tomorrow. Now listening to this point, love more deeply. Believe me, there is no time to quarrel. There is love. Because by the time you are quarreling and the owner comes for the life, you will have ended your relationship on a quarreling level. There is no time to quarrel. For you to handle that life with care, love more deeply. Because you may not have another opportunity I got this kind of revelation a few, maybe years ago, I can't remember the exact time, and I made up my mind, I have no more energy to worry. And I was glad when my wife said, uh, maybe a few days ago, they said, well, you have to wait to go. Uh-uh. <laughs> you have to wait to I said, what did you see? She began to send me some other things. I didn't tell her the reason why. But I know how to do it. Yeah. Love why you can. Love why the opportunity still exists. Because you may not have the opportunity to love again. Okay? Let's read Matthew 5, 40 to 42. Together we'll read Matthew 5, 40 to 42. Matthew 5, 40 to 42. So you can mark it in your Bible. Matthew 5, 40 to 42. And if any man will sue thee at law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him too. Give to help to him that asks thee, and from him that will borrow from thee, turn not thou away. Verse 44, let's read verse 44. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Verse 45. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and send his rain on the just and the unjust. This passage says God blesses the just and the unjust. He blesses those that are good and those that are evil. <laughs> so why if your father blesses the good and the evil, blesses the 
the just and the unjust. When the rain comes, it falls on all of us. When the sun shines, it falls on all of us, whether you are good or bad. That's why he says to you, love everyone. Why? Because the opportunity to love did not come again. I want to close with the final point for today. And then we'll carry on next time we have the, have the opportunity to share the word with you. Forgive more readily. Forgive more readily. That is how to handle this life with care. Is this easy? No. But will you protect your life by forgiving? Yes. I will give you a few passages as we close. Forgive more readily. Why? Because when there is anger in your heart, when there is malice in your heart, you are about to cut your life short. Is somebody listening to me? Anger and malice will kill you. The doctors say it can lead to hypertension. The person that offended you will still live long. You that you are angry, you end up with hypertension. Who is the loser? If you keep malice in you and anger in you, it's a poison. It will poison you. Even the medical doctors will tell you. I know of a man that died. I know the man personally. Somebody offended him. He was telling another person how the person offended him. He was so, so angry. In that anger, he had a seizure and he died. I know the person personally. He was just complaining that somebody offended him. But the anger was too much. He had a seizure and he died. Handle with care. Handle with care. Proverbs 29, 22, you can mark it in your Bible. He says, the angry man abounds in transgression. That anybody who is angry will not be able to do anything good. Think about it. Each time you are angry, when last did you do anything good? When you are angry, I will get back to that person. I will show him. You will know who my father is. <laughs> I will show you pain. That's what the Bible says. The angry man abounds in transgression. That's your anger is destroying your life. It's driving you further and further and further away from God. In case you have not read that Proverbs 29 verse 22, go and check out James chapter 1. Verse 19 to 20. James 1, 19 to 20. It says, Let every man be quick to hear, slow to, to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man walketh on the righteousness of God. So be quick to hear, but very slow to speak. Very slow to get angry. Because the anger of man walketh not the righteousness of God. Handle with care. Handle with care. In your anger, you will end up destroying the life that God has given you. We're out of time. But maybe I'll just give you two and go and study it and then we'll continue from there. Matthew 18, Matthew 18, 21 to 22. I'll leave it at that and then we'll close for today. Peter was very hungry. 
Matthew 18, 31 to 22. He was very, very angry. I'm sure he had had a sermon before. Forgive. Then he went to the Lord. Say, Lord, if somebody offends me, Lord, if somebody offends me, Lord, Lord, if somebody offends me, Lord, how many times should I forgive? Seven times. I suspect somebody has offended Peter. And he has counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, now I can fight. So you want that confirmation from the Lord. How many times do I forgive? Seven times? And God said, no. Seventy times, seven times in one day. Peter must have been very sad. Let's rise on our feet. And say, Papa, please help me to hand.